Do you want to understand how to analyze rental properties in the fastest way possible? This will save you a ton of time. It is not that complicated. You need to stop over complicating things. Pay attention. Look, as a disclaimer, I want to throw out there that you should do a full analysis before you buy any property or any investment in general, real estate or not. But don't overcomplicate your life if it isn't necessary. So look, I want to show you napkin math, right? Back of the napkin. We've heard people joke about back of the napkin math, right? Like, oh man, I only did this. But the reality is a lot of people have bought houses this way and not failed because buying a rental property really is not that complicated, right? You need to have a basic understanding of your market. You need to have a basic understanding of the numbers and you need to know, hey, if I buy at this price, is it good, right? Like it's not that hard. So watch this. Look, in other areas, there might be other things, but this is the basics, right? This is what you want. So look, let's say you have a property and it makes $1,000 a month in rental income. And let's say you budget 7% for all of this. So that'd be 70 for CapEx, 70 for maintenance, 70 for vacancy, 70 for property management, and then your principal interest, taxes and insurance, Let's say it was a hundred thousand dollar home, and so all of that comes in at a grand total of let's just say five hundred. And let's say that the tenant pays utilities on this one, so that puts us at seventy, hundred and forty, two hundred and eighty, seven eighty, right? Yeah, seven eighty, and that means you should have two hundred and twenty dollars in cash flow. Now, is this a good deal? Maybe. But we're going to get into that in a minute. First, look, a couple of things. You should have a good idea what a property will rent for in your area. If you don't, you should ask a property manager or a realtor. However, it's quite possible to figure this out with it, without either of them by using Rentometer. And I'm a huge fan of Rentometer. I'll put a link down below to check out Rentometer. And if for some reason I forget, put it on the comments or you can go to my resource page on my website and it's right there. But Rentometer is a... Well, it's free for like the first five times, and then it's a super cheap, super affordable, super intuitive platform that allows you to figure out what a property will rent for, right? You type in the zip code and or the address and how many beds and baths and it boop, 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 all the aggregate data and it's very accurate. So Rentometer will pay for itself in just probably the first time you use it because you'll be able to increase rents to cover what Rentometer costs. And it has saved me hundreds of dollars month over month over month by allowing me to increase rents on several properties. So huge fan. So that's one way to find rent. Another way is Craigslist or just asking other landlords. You can see what places are renting for and see how quickly they list it or they, they got stopped were not listed anymore as a rental. Um, you can call people who are renting properties and ask them uh, or ask property manager, realtor. There's a lot of ways to figure out what a property will rent for, but these are basic numbers, right? So I just did 7% for everything. For those of you who don't know, CapEx or capital expenditures is those things that have to be done to update a property, right? Like those are items like a roof. Um, uh, it could be a new laundry machine or a new washer dryer or a new... I just said laundry machine and washer dryer. I'm going to leave that in there because I'm not perfect. Pobody's nerfect. Um, it could be a new dishwasher. It could be sink. It might be some foundation work. Like Those are things that don't necessarily improve the value of the home but need to be replaced. These items have a ex life expectancy, and you need to understand that and then budget for them. So you can figure this all out. There's actually some interesting calculations or calculators for figuring out capex where you can program in how much a dishwasher costs what the expected life expense expectancy is and if you have a duplex you can do two of them or one of them for a single family and then it'll tell you how much you should budget month over month based on how old it is what the life expectancy is and what it costs and it'll do all the math for you so that's pretty cool if you want that uh form pay for my course because it's in there no i'm just kidding um let me know and if I'm if I get enough questions or or comments or hints for it, then I'll I'll share it out to the masses and I'll let you all have it. Um, honestly, I'll just give it to you anyway. So let me know. Um, maintenance that's things that break, things that go boom in the night, right? So something a tenant breaks, whatever. It's stuff that breaks. Vacancy obviously that's when someone's not in the home. You can budget more or less for this depending on your average vacancy. You know it depends, right? Like. It is what it is. It's going to be different based on who you're renting to, who your market is, how expensive your market is, and how hot the market is, and a lot of other variables. And then PM, that's property manager. Now, you don't have to budget for this, right? If you're going to manage all your own properties, 
but you should always put in an amount for property management to make sure it pencils out or pens out or drawing ink pen thing that I'm trying to learn how to do out in such a way that once you do decide you need a property manager, if you ever decide that, it'll still cash flow. So even if you, so if you don't plan on using one, right, you go over here, you just whoop, that's a cross out, and then you just add 70. So now you got, uh, I'm trying to do all this, whatever. So let's just pretend this is a, a one, and this is 290. Man, that didn't work out well. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that all there anyway. You get the idea. So that's what you could do. Now, if you don't want to do that, you know, no what, no wonder, no whatever, whatever. Look, all right, cool. There we go. So assuming that you do not care about that, just budget for it so that it'll cash flow even if you don't use, a pro or if you do end up using a property manager. Because as you grow, you very well might, might want to, or maybe you just want to be more passive or you move far away. Whatever the reason is, you may budget for a property manager. Now, a lot of places, a property manager is actually 10%, so that would be $100, which would actually bring this down to 190 right? Because we're budgeting more for a PM. So, you never know, right? And you can play with these, right? CapEx, if it's an older house, you might need to replace a lot more. So you might want to budget 10% for that as well. And then now you're down to, you know, 160. I'm going to stop tweaking these numbers as I talk. You guys get the idea. So understand how the math works. Understand what those basic things are. But you can legitimately sit down and you can go, hmm, okay, so if we know rent is 1,000 and we subtract subtract all of this crap from it and we get we'll say the original number so 220 then that's my cash flow now that equals out to uh math and public i think it's 2640 a year right yeah 2400 plus yep yeah. so 2640 a year now is that good cash flow maybe it depends right if you put fifty thousand dollars down right that's a terrible return on investment. But if you only put $10,000 down, that's 25% ROI, 26, 27% ROI, 26.4% if you want to get super technical, right? And so it depends on how much money you put down. That's why a million dollar investment that cash flows $100 might be a terrible idea, but a $50,000 investment that cash flows $100 might not, right? Or a $50,000 property. Um, so you never know. But this is basic napkin math. So again, it is income minus expenses equals net operating income. Now, again, this is super basic, right? This is definitely not how I would recommend that you buy your first property, but you could buy a property this way if you're familiar with the numbers. Heck, I bought a duplex earlier this year and I didn't even do this much math because I had a duplex that I owned two or three blocks over and I knew the numbers. And I knew, hey, this one's a little bit bigger, this one has garages, this one's better, and I'm getting it for almost the same price. This is a great deal. It doesn't need a whole lot of work. Let's pull the trigger. Let's go. Let's make it happen. So I did. So you need to understand the basics of rental income in your area. And if you do that, then you can very, very much run numbers like this as long as you know your numbers and you'd be okay, right? So this is super basic math. This is just to give you the idea. And what I want you to take away from this is that buying rental properties and investment real estate doesn't need to be super complicated. It doesn't need to be super scary. It can be as simple as pulling out a piece of paper and a pen, jotting down some numbers and saying, okay, for that amount of money down, that would be a good return. Let's do it. And and again, remember, and this is, like I said, this is all super basic, but remember, this is cash flow. That doesn't take into account that on a, the $500 principal and interest, probably like 100 to 150, we'll just say 150 is principal pay down, right? So that's, that's another... Uh, 1800 every year paid off. So that's, oh, this is going to be, look at me doing math in public, right? So 34, 40, oops, that should be 44, 40. So $4,440 return every year if you consider principal pay down in that. And that's being paid off by your tenants, right? So there's a ton of benefits here. This is really just a simple down and dirty. If you want more information on analyzing deals, uh, of course, there's always my super affordable 
real, 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 I joke, joking who say that, but it's the most affordable real estate course out there for beginners. It'll get you from zero properties to managing and operating your first one efficiently and ready to take on your second, third, fourth, 10th, whatever. So check that out. Link will be down in the, down in the description, but also just understand that this shouldn't be that scary, right? Gurus might make it sound like you can't do it without them. You totally can do this without me. You just got to read some books, do some stuff. If you're not super self-motivated, self-starter, maybe you need to have a course or a program, or maybe you just like to have a course or a program where it's all put in order for you. Either way, if you found this helpful, please subscribe, please smash that like button and let YouTube know that you found this helpful. Comment what your favorite part was. Comment what you think about me using this. I'm trying to get better. If you have ideas for how I can make this drawing, these drawings more helpful, I really appreciate you guys. Have a great freaking day and don't be a little bitch.